Greetings, greetings. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, this morning, I come to, jumped on to have a, a quick live discussion about a post that I made. And um, I think it was a, a very uh, interesting uh, post of, of comments. And uh, so I wanted to uh, jump on and and uh, just kind of talk about it briefly there. Uh, and I know a couple of other people who didn't comment um, uh, were watching and looking. And so it was very interesting. Shalom, what's going on, Brother Seth? Uh, you're the first one in the building this morning. What's going on with you? All right, all right. What's going on? Hey, look, I only have about maybe a good 20, 25 minutes. And I'm going to um, kind of jump in here and and kind of, you know, um, share some thoughts on on the post there. Um, and so there were a couple of, couple of comments, uh, that I, I found interesting. So I'm going to look at kind of some of those comments and, um, read some of those comments, uh, which is, again, it was an interesting, uh, post, uh, there. So let's, uh, let's see here. And, and a couple more people started commenting afterwards. Um, and so uh, I'm seeing the first comment, uh, Brother Rico Reese says, building funds means we need to pay for these lights, bills, dinner, money for the staff after church. All right. So that was his commentary. Uh, Brother Johnny Rucker, uh, Dr. Rucker says, because most good churches have good ideas, but bad execution. All right. Then uh, Tor Away JP says, because they say, their bodies are the temple slash uh, building or building slash temple. And these are busy buildings that built that building mostly by eating the funds. Um, and he explains what they're eating, steak, shrimp, lobster, ribs, pork chops, pies, and cakes, uh, cakes and pies, et cetera. I guess he's adding a little comedy to that. Um, and uh, Brother Ray uh, Hardy says, that's a really good question. Uh, Ralph Sinclair says, could be building somewhere else if you know what I mean. All right. So that's a little comedy there. So the Carol says, it's part of the church uh, acumens. I think that's what she's saying. Um, Lady Emma, my beautiful wife, Lady Emma says, well, if you only give five dollars to the building fund, I mean, all right. So that garnered uh, about ten or so responses uh, to uh, to her comment. Bobby Bobby says uh, his comment was mortgage, lights, gas, and or rent. All right. Kendra Winters uh, says. Sometimes it takes that long to get all the money up to build, I guess. Um, uh, Reverend Randy Sewell, Pastor Randy Sewell says, it's not a fund to actually build a building, but it's a fund for the upkeep of the building. It's more like an emergency fund when something goes wrong when the, with the facility. It's a needed fund. So I was, you know, that's interesting. I, I was wondering when the pastors was going to come out and uh, share their thoughts on it. And uh, again, my post is for educational purposes, just to get thoughts. And I, I actually want to see who all have a working understanding of the church, okay, or the assembly or the ecclesia or the building or, um, you know, the place that you meet. Uh, and so, Antonio Ballas says it could be for light bills or light bills or other stuff like water bills. Okay. 
Um, Thomas Brown says the world may never know. In some com comedic, some comedy there. Uh, Yakava, she just puts up, hey, who knows? Uh, Dwayne P say, hey, you know, I'm curious, wanting to see what's going on. But the Damien uh, says, oh, see there. But Derek Washington says, it's never said. It never said what building fund. It said the building fund. Okay, so there's some distinction there. Uh, Wanda Bruce says that part. Where's the money? Show me the money. And then um, uh, Precious tagged in Sky, um, well, uh, Sky Wesley uh, to comment. And uh, Sky Wesley said red flag. Larry Bates says, and don't keep the building in good repair. All right. So LaDonna says they got their business model from Dr. Umar. OK. Uh, Elder Mark James says they do build their pockets. So that's some comedic comedy there. Uh, Cassandra says because some some churches are building wealthy fund for the pastor. And the so-called first lady lavish lifestyle. Y'all know this. Okay. So she said, we all know this. So that's that's some of the other, you know, questions, I mean, statements, which again is 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 nothing wrong with um having a conversation. There's nothing wrong with uh people um looking at that. And definitely, y'all don't forget, listen, at the bottom of the screen, you said say send 200 stars. To pin your comment. All right. Don't be afraid to send stars. Uh, it works with the algorithms to help boost up the video and things like that. All right. Uh, it's not, we're not asking you for a tithe or an offering. All we're doing is asking you to hit the stars, you know, give some stars if, if, uh, if you so choose to, but that definitely will help. Um, I would just definitely, let me see you in the comment section. Let me go here. Shalom, uh, Maya. Shalom to you as well. Uh, the J, uh, Sister Lisa Burton, shalom to you as well. Uh, Lady Tamika, shalom to you uh, as well. And um, all that will be coming on um, after they get this notification. Um, so th the thing is, is that I, I, I wanted to put that post out there and I, I, re I formed it uh, in such a way because, again, I think that um, what happens is, is that so many people are looking at different things and um and they're formulating opinions off of things that and don't have a full working knowledge of how certain things work and so i can understand you know looking from the outside in uh listening to people online and social media but i think that it's very important for us to have an education of the things if we're going to combat against it have an opinion about it I think that we do. And within those comments, there was a lot of, it was a mix. Um, there was a mixed variety of things. Some people uh, talked about, you know, lights and water, you know, that's what the building fund is for. Others say, Hey, the building fund is to, to, to help a pastor's lavish lifestyle. Others uh, would say, well, you know, the building fund went towards a building that, you know, never got built, you know? And so my question was posed, um, to uh, see what would be the responses to that, because I know that's one of those questions um, of, that evolves around uh, certain things and certain feelings that people have within the church uh, community. And so it's very important for us to really understand these things. It's, it's no different than uh, someone saying uh, a certain thing about 501c3s uh, and, and, and not have a full working knowledge of it uh, I think it's very important. I'm 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 all for uh, people having opinions and thoughts, but I want to. I'm I'm definitely for people knowing what they're talking about when they make certain statements, and not out of emotions or not how they feel about a certain entity or organization. I think it's very important for us to be sharp in that and really have a thorough understanding of that, so that way we're not just out here saying things that we don't know what we're talking about because it can expose us uh, to things. And you don't have to know everything, but you do want to have some form of uh, understanding about something if you're going to be for it or if you're going to be against it. I'm very uh, serious about that. So I want to share something here. Let's get into, um, I want to look at uh, something 
here to help us and uh, pull up something. Uh, I found um, online there was something that I feel that was very, very good uh, and kind of can formulate, can give us some understanding of certain things when it comes down to this type of conversation. So um, let me see here. I think that looks pretty good uh, at building that up. Um, and so um, let's look at, so this is something I want to look at online um, to kind of shape, to give us kind of an understanding of some of the things that are going on um, with, based on the topic of conversation that we're having about this thing about the building fund and funds and all that other stuff. Okay, so let's look at this, right? So let, we're going to read this here. Um, this is um, some information kind of about what funds and designate, how funds are designated uh, within the organization, especially if you're one that is going to be involved with some form of ministry or something like that. It's very important to be educated in that and to know not only that, but there are also uh, ministries that are out that are out here that are operating illegally. OK, and this is something that is very important. What I mean illegally is especially when it comes down to certain funds and things like that. And especially if you are a organization, it doesn't have to be a church organization. This is another thing that I want people to understand, too. It doesn't have to be a church organization for you to be a nonprofit. OK, you don't have to be a church organization. You could be a nonprofit organization that. Um, that provides jobs or provide other means of other things and other areas. And within that, you can operate illegally, okay? So it's not just so designated to ministry per se, but you can also operate illegally based off the terms and the conditions of the grant or the nonprofit status that you have. You still have to fall in line, okay? So this is something that's very important, all right? And you can't be out here operating in such a way. But also at the same time is that people make statements about things that they don't really have an understanding about. So let's look at this here. Uh, it says, uh, and this is someone who's writing, um, who put together something I think is very, very uh, solid and profound uh, statement um, of information here. So it says, during my time helping churches with administration and record keeping, I have discovered that a great many churches do not properly understand designated funds. So designated funds will be also what we discussed when I put up the post about the building fund. How is it that, you know, um, churches have building funds for 20 to 30 years, but they never build anything, okay? Or they haven't built anything. And what I mean is not just so designated to a new building. I'm talking about all the way down to maybe the roof is about to fall off or cave in, and they haven't built that. They haven't fixed that, or um, they have something you know within the ministry. Maybe the pipes have bust or something like that, or or whatever it is. And they need a new air conditioning system. Whatever it is, why haven't they built anything or added to um, in that situation? And most people who read my post automatically mind goes to building some mega church, and that had. That was not the purpose of the post, all right? But again, when you have a working knowledge of, of what it means, and there's, and there's also, uh, you, can, you could, and, and I'm not limiting, limiting it to not being someone wants to build a new building. It just all depends on what the purpose of it is, but it's not solely, the sole purpose is not to build a building, okay? Or find land and build that. All right, because somebody can simply turn around and say, hey, look, you know what? Um, I'm going to go go get a loan in my personal name and buy the land and build it myself. And then they can later on decide, well, they want to sell it to the church. OK, that could happen, especially if the if the person or the ministry don't have the funds. All right. And that's and that was kind of something that even my wife alluded to putting which well, not alluded to, but that's what she said. Uh, on the post about the $5 building fund, all right? But let's look at this here. All right, we're going to keep reading. It says that um, many churches do not properly understand designated funds and oftentimes use them in a way that is harmful to the church. 
So I would like to explain, help explain what designated funds are and how to use them in a way that benefits the church and is consistent with proper accounting methods for nonprofit organizations. Now, most of us, we automatically equate that the pastor, or we bring accusations that the pastor bought his new car or his or whatever with the church money. Now, that's not always the case. Okay, that is not always the case. Some do, all right? And the question is, is that are those funds designated for that purpose? That's the question, all right? If it's not designated for that purpose, then that's operating illegally. But if it is designated for that purpose, then they're in right standing with the, with, with the rules and with the government, okay, in that matter, all right? It all depends on if it's designated for that. If not, you could be operating illegally if the funds are not designated to buy a slice of pizza. You could still be operating illegally based off a $5 piece of pizza, all because you used the funds for a $5 piece of pizza and it was not designated for the $5 piece of pizza. All right. That's just the way it is. It doesn't have to be a $20 million jet. It could be $5 and you can be a, and you can be held accountable for misusing pro, uh, funds improperly. All right. That's the way we have to educate ourselves, not throwing out stuff out here, just saying all kind of crazy stuff on social media, creating videos, and we make ourselves look crazy, and we wonder why nobody don't listen to us, all right? So let's look at here. It says, so I would like to ex explain, all right, the designated fund of nonprofit organizations, all right? So a little history, and this, I want to help, again, this is very important to help you. A little history, and some people it may they may not even care. Some it's some people that on that's going to watch this video. They don't even they don't attend no assembly. They don't go to no church, whether they in the Hebrew congregation or Christian. It doesn't matter. This is not even based upon uh, denominationalism or any type of uh, what you identify. This is solely education. Okay, this is solely education to help y'all. All right. So because again. There are people that's going to watch. They, it doesn't even matter to them because they don't attend no assembly. They just criticize, whether it's Hebrew or Christian or not. It doesn't matter. They're just going to criticize, okay? So let's, let's look at this here, all right? So it says, a little history may be helpful here. Years ago, nonprofits would list their at total assets on a balance sheet. The problem was that while the total was accurate, it did not tell that some of that money was restricted in use, giving a false sense of the actual financial condition of the company. Okay, now look at here. So in, two, in 2008, the Financial Accounting Standard Board, FASB, issued a financial accounting standard in uh, uh, 117 that required a nonprofit that required a nonprofit's net. net assets to be reported as unrestricted, temporarily restricted, or permanently restricted. In addition, the restriction was to be identified as a donor restricted or a board restricted. All right. So there are different assets. Okay. And again, when we start getting this conversation, regardless of the total, regardless of the assets, regardless of what is identified is, again, it's the $5 again. And I think that most people that probably would, that are going to make the uh, most complaints or most people that are going to bring most indictments are generally the $5 people, all right? <laughs> you know, back in the day, they were $5 Indians, all right? In today's time, it's generally the most people that most bring most of the accusations are the people that are $5 people. That's just what it is. $5 to the restricted fund, $5 to the unrestricted fund, and $5 to the permanent fund, all right? Temp uh, 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 permanent fund. That's $15. They get fifteen dollars, all right. And I'm not bringing any indictment against nobody if that's all they got. But we talk about people that got the most complaints. Those most of the people uh, that got it, but only give fifteen dollars or give on five dollars to the five dollar people, all right. So let's look at this. An unrestricted asset is an asset, all right. Is an asset usually cash that can be used for any purpose. So. While we sitting up here bringing indictment and talking about, well, you know, they did they, this, this unrestricted asset, there could be an unrestricted asset fund, okay? 
that this is a unrestricted asset fund that is not restricted to anything and can be used for anything. That's why I'm saying when you bring an indictment and saying, oh, how he, you know, bought a jet with the church money. Well, first of all, the people who are saying that, they're not even educated on the subject. And two, most of them are people that are just watching from the sideline, which would equate to the same thing. Not knowing that there are unrestricted funds or unrestricted um, uh, cash flow in a certain area. Now, it doesn't mean that with it being unrestricted, it doesn't mean that a, that that you can bring an indictment against someone for using those unrestricted funds. No, because it's already identified as such. And generally, most con most congregations or most churches, generally, most of them have a bank account set up for that or some form, and it's reported as such. All right, shalom, 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 shalom. It's reported as such. Now, the question is, do you know, if you're going to make the indictment, do you know if it's unrestricted or not? So look what it says, it's unrestricted. This is generally the gifts received by a church and used for paying the payroll salaries, programs, and operating expenses. Now, somebody put in the, somebody who commented on, the, on my post, they said, hey, that money, that building fund money is used to pay for the salaries and programs of the churches. And I think they might have been, you know, kind of trying to be funny about it. Well, if that's the case, what they said is true, and they may not even know that it's true what they were saying. They probably was trying to be funny or make an indictment or whatnot. But in this case, if salaries are being paid to people such as, because here's the thing, don't nobody, don't nobody want to volunteer no more. Okay, let's get that straight. Don't nobody want to, you can't even get highly people to volunteer for anything. Don't nobody want to volunteer no more. So guess what? You got to have a secretary. You got to have, you got to pay somebody to pay the church bills. Okay. You have to pay somebody nowadays. Shoot. I mean, you got to pay choir directors. You got to pay choirs now. You know, next to us, you're going to want to get paid. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, let's, let's, let's be all the way honest. If we're going to talk about who receiving the most money in the church, you can almost say that the musicians get paid more than the pastor. I mean, let's this, 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 this be honest. We have, you have musicians, they might play at two or three different churches on a particular day. They making more money. You know, <laughs> they they I mean, think about it. If you if you playing three churches in a day and you getting paid five hundred dollars every Sunday from each church, that's fifteen hundred dollars a Sunday. Most pastors that most most the average pastors, we're not talking about these mega church people, okay? Because it's more average churches than it is mega churches. So let's let's not play this game. All right. There's more average churches. Then it all mega churches and the average church pastor, most of them still work a job or if not the average church still work a job, they have some form of investments or something going on or they work on a job that is paying them pretty good money. Or if not, they work on a job that's barely making funds, making, making, making ends meet and they are pulling out of their own homes to make sure that the church is provided for. And that's the truth. Okay. so. Every pastor ain't on, and, and if a pastor is on a salary, the average pastor salary may be to a, maybe two or three hundred dollars a, 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 a month. Maybe, maybe three hundred dollars a month. The average pastor, if he is on a salary, the average church, not not a church that's five hundred plus people, okay. We're talking about the average church, a ch average church with under a hundred people. That pastor may, may, and he is maybe get a $300 a month salary. And that's a strong maybe. Most of those pastors still work a job. And most of those pastors probably give more or pay more of the bills than the actual membership. 
I'm just being honest with you. Or if not as equal to the membership, because the money got to come from somewhere when the bills are short. That's just what it is. That's a side of ministry that people from the outside look at that they don't understand and know until you get put in the seat. Or you get you go into those 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 uh, meeting meetings where you got to pay bills and you hear, hey, this how much came in this month, and uh, this month our bills are, um, you know, two thousand dollars a month rent, lights, water, and all that, and we only brought in eight hundred dollars this month. Where that money coming from? Okay, where's it coming from? Now, if you have a building fund, all right, if you have a building fund or something like that, then you may have to pull out of that. But again, if you don't have, if you only have uh, $300 in the building fund, that $300 still ain't gonna help you, okay? So let's move, let's move here, all right? So I wanna kind of get to the point I'm closing here. All right, so look what it says here. Temporary, so we're looking at unrestricted, all right? Unrestricted, this generally, Gifts received by a church and used for paying the payroll, salaries, programs, and operating expenses of the church. You gotta have you gotta have something that's gonna keep the lights on, y'all. So look at what it said: a temporary restricted asset. So now you have unrestricted. Now you're getting into temporary. So what is temporary? This is this. All right, is a temporary asset is one that is restricted to a particular use over a period of time. A church example might be a building fund. Okay, now we talk about a building fund. All right, so this unrestricted asset is not dealing with the building fund. All right, whether that building fund is to fix something on the church or if that building fund is to build a new building, it all depends on how what the purpose of the building fund is. And I know uh, Reverend, Reverend Sewell, uh, Pastor Sewell, play, put on comment on the post that the building fund was not for the building, and that may just may not may not for be building a new building, and that just may be for what he's speaking on based on his church uh, definition of that. All right, but. His church definition may be their building fund because they already have a building if for the upkeep of the of the church. If uh, the roof leaks, if the air condition goes out, if the whatever the situation is, is needed at his church, that the building fund is for that is not for building a new facility. Well, somebody else church may build and fund may be or their whole vision is to build, to buy land. They can have a building fund for buying land and the building fund can also be for building a new facility on that property all right it can be it, or it could be that they already have a building and they have land that's on that property that they want to add a food pantry all right that they want to build a new food pantry connected to the church because maybe they're looking to expand in providing for families within that in, in within that community all right so there's different meanings for that it's not all equated to the same thing all right, so let's look at here. Let's, um, let's see here. All right. So, hey, shalom, 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 everybody. Shalom, shalom, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's look at here. All right, so it says, think of this fund as a cash bucket that is used to accumulate funds for future use of a new building. All right, so this whole thing, the idea in which this person is writing He's saying, think of, he's not saying that it is for a new building. He's saying that, think of it. Think of this fund as a cash bucket that is used to accumulate fund for a future use of a building, okay? The wording is very important, all right? Which it could be. It just depends on the purpose of the, uh, the, the, purpose of the building fund. It depends on if the pastor um, has already laid that out and the congregation agrees to, hey, our building fund is this. Our goal for the building fund to build a new building is $300,000. That is our goal. And over a period of time that this, but again, if that goal is to build a build new building and the building fund is for the purpose of that building based on the definition of that congregation and that community, at $300,000, how can you reach your goal if five or $10 is given? How? It's going to be 30 years. Not only that, the pastor might be dead 
by the time the building is built. Or if the building does reach the goal, he's 70. If he started out at 40 years old, the new building comes while he's 70 years old. 70 years old. Now to be now now to shed some even more light on this, I think that when it comes down to these things, just talking to different pastors and different ethnic groups of pastors, I think the black church has the biggest problem with this. All right. Because even just talking to some of the white pastors that I know, there's a working understanding of this. The mindset isn't we're getting we're starting a building fund to take care of the pastor. In fact, some of the white pastors that I know, um, and I think I've shared this publicly before, that some of the white pastors that I do know that they won't even that that some of the members won't even be a part of the church if the pastor works a job because they feel as though he can't be the full, he can't give his all to the ministry because he works a job. That's not the black church mindset. Black church don't don't, don't have that mindset. All right. And there's been other churches where they didn't have to even ask or talk about an offering. They just have the bucket sitting in the back or they have uh, some form of offering um, uh, can or something that would they collect their tithes and offerings in. And they don't even tell the people, hey, look, don't forget to pay your offering. Don't forget to pay your tithes. It is already in them. And they have an understanding that in order for us to have a proper facility is that that I have to do my part. And they have a, a mindset that they're going to pay their 10% of their salary. That's just what it is. And those are in other ethnic groups. All right. Now, I'm not saying all of the black church has that mindset or all black people have that mindset, but a lot of majority of the people are. And here's, and here's an even more important thing that you need to know. Or at certain, at certain times pre-COVID, Pre-COVID, only 10% of the church carried the church. Only 10% of the congregation, 10% of the people in the congregation actually pay, actually give to sustain a congregation. Now, post-COVID, I'm pretty sure those numbers have diminished probably around the 7% of the congregation. 7% of the congregation. So that means if you have, let's say a hundred people in your congregation, a hundred people in congregation, not even 20 people are giving, not even 20, okay? Less than that are actually carrying everybody. Think about that. And out of those people who are carrying, the people who aren't are the ones who bring in the indictments. Now think about that. And then people get will get offended if an indictment is coming against the pastor. Well, what is he doing with the money? People will get offended if the pastor actually brought out the role and the giving records publicly, it would be an uproar. It would be an uproar. It really would. So you have to be wise in how you move in today's time. You can't have the mindset, if I build it, they'll come. Because people are in a different place nowadays. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen for you. You have to use wisdom. Use your practical understanding of things in our day and age. Don't be so overly spiritual that you don't understand the people that you serve. As a pastor, you have to know the people that you, you serve. And you have to know their heart and their thinking of certain things and positions. And then you make your decisions practically Based on that, that's not saying that you don't have faith. That's saying that you have that you have that you have uh, uh, common sense, and you trust the Most High. You have both, so you have to move differently. And that's why even today's time now, 
it's going to require even more pastors to become more entrepreneurial. And that's something that, that I think that, um, um, that is very, very well needed. It's something that we all have to, as pastors, have to look more into. Regardless of the indictment of people, oh, well, you know, oh, well, he bought this, he bought that. Well, guess what? I didn't use unrestricted funds because we didn't have any. I didn't use temporary restricted funds because we didn't have any. I didn't use permanent restricted assets because we didn't have any. So guess what? You know how I bought this? I bought this because I had investments. I got Airbnbs. I got uh, uh, I got a restaurant. I got all this other stuff going on. So I didn't buy it with none of y'all restricted, unrestricted, temporary, or permanent money because we didn't have it. And guess what? The building is being paid for. Why? Because of my assets, my personal assets, or my personal job. So if my personal job is doing this, paying for the building, my personal job is also paying for my vehicle and my house. But you on the outside who is bringing the indictment and bringing accusations, who's a part of the $5 community, you have all the indictment in the world with no edge working education of how things are operating. And you're not even looking at or even considering or even care about what's going on within the congregation. And so we have to be smart in today's time and how we move and operate. So this is why I'm trying to help educate brothers and sisters so you be slow to share your thoughts, okay? And make sure you have a working knowledge of what's going on within whatever congregation you're a part of, okay? And if you're not a part of a congregation, still, you know, do your homework and just don't be shouting and screaming out everything out here. Okay, this is this is, this is very interesting, very important. Okay, so look what it says here. All right, temporary restricted assets. Think of this fund as a cash bucket uh, that is used to accumulate funds for future use of a new building, major repairs, and additions. When the new building or additions is complete and the money is used, the fund is closed. So you can't use. All right, so you cannot if this if this building fund is for a new building or for major repairs and additions once that addition built new building is built once the additions have been added to a current building or repairs have been done to a current building you have to close that fund you cannot use that fund for something else meaning if you have this building fund to uh, renovate the bathroom because the bathroom has been since the 70s. Once it's done, you cannot have that fund to work on the church vans. You have to close that fund and create a whole new fund so that way that fund can be can be can be designated temporarily restricted for repairs on the church vans. Okay, people not educated on that. Peace and blessings to you as well, Elder. This is where we have to be educated. Not only as people who attend congregations and people who bring accusations, but even us as pastors, we have to be understand that you can't use a fund that is a temporary restricted fund for something else if it's not designated to that. So you have to compartmentalize these, these funds to make sure that you are in, in order and not working out of order and, and out of alignment. So if it's for one thing, you can't use it for another. If the building fund is for the church van, you can't use it for paying the light bill. You can't do that. These things have to be designated and then you have to close the fund, all right? So let's look at here, let's continue. An example of a permanently restricted asset would be an empowerment and bequest or other major donations that may never be spent but invested and only the income may be used. Check this out. This is another fund. Like say, for example, if there's a permanently restricted fund and the, and the congregation or the church board or whoever, whoever over it says, look, I want to, these funds, we want to use these funds to buy an apartment complex. The church does. The church wants to buy an apartment complex 
and use that as a nonprofit organization once they buy it and or use it as a, a form of grant to be able to receive grant from the government for low income housing for people. OK, the church can have a restricted asset or a fund set up for the sole purpose of buying a comp apartment complex. All right. The church owns that as an investment, but funds or money cannot be made off of that unless the income is used. OK, let's read it again. All right. Other major donations that may never be spent but invest it so you can't spend the money that's coming in for the sole purpose of personal of personal gain it has to be set up if it's set up for the church the church has to use those funds that are given for the whole purpose of buying that building all right then it says but invest it and in only the income so whatever income say for example there's a grant you receive from um the government for that will pay um up to 80% of the housing of people whoever moves into the uh that apartment those apartments the the renter is responsible for 20% of of their rent okay so if the government says well, we're going to give you a grant we'll pay $80 but the person who lives there they have to pay $20 okay well that $20 that the person is given i mean that the person is paying to stay there, that money can be used by the church who owns the property, okay? They can be used, all right? It says, but invested and only the income may be used. That income may in turn be unrestricted or temporarily restricted for a particular use, all right? To sum, to, uh, so to sum it up, there are three types of funds, unrestricted, temporary, and permanently okay so then you get down here and i'm gonna close on this then you have the general fund okay so we have to know what's going on when we start talking about building fund and what this uh, uh means okay all right there are different meanings and understandings or there are different meanings of, of different purposes let me say that for whatever building fund it is and it has to be designated for that particular thing once it's done all right, you gotta you gotta wrap it up. All right, so let's look at it. General fund. This is the cash fund that is used to operate the daily activities of the church. This includes the income from giving, meaning offering, income from building use and, and rental, interest and dividend income, and other types of funds fundings that goes to operate the church. The general fund also includes the following type of expenses. All right, apportionment and conference benevolent givings the pastor or other clergy or staff salaries and benefits. So it could be, hey, the paid, you know, this general fund could be to pay the pastor's salary or the general fund could be the paid salary of the staff. Or it could be, hey, you got a guest speaker coming in town and you want to make sure that they have a, a you know, place to stay. You want to give them an offering or whatever you want to give them. There it is. All right, it falls under that. Program expenses for worship. All right, meaning that um, if there's, say for instance, uh, something breaks, you know, the sound, the speaker or the sound board goes out, you know, you got to have that general fund is going to go to making sure you, you know, that is uh, fixed or get a new one, education, fellowship, missions. So when you have a general fund, again, when you look at this breakdown and you start going into the Torah, you're going to also see that there's different things when we start talking about tithes for specific things or offering for specific things for specific people. All right, that falls under the community. All right, so you see these kind of things, kind of sorta, of, but we get into that whole conversation about the tour later when it comes down to uh, different things um, and, and different offerings and, and, and tithes and things like that. All right, so a staff salaries and benefits, program expenses for worship, education, fellowship, missions, and outreach. All right, operating expenses such as utilities, uh, office expenses, advertising, insurance, building repairs, and maintenance cleaning and other expenses that support the ministry now what if you got all this stuff going on again if you have all this stuff going on and if we just say if we you never take up an offering or you know if you believe in tithes or whatnot because there's different beliefs on that again you cannot operate 
off one dollar. You just you can't do it. I, you just, even if you just can't do it, man. All right. So again, these are the things that when we start looking at this stuff, all right, other 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 uh, ethnic groups, they they kind of have more of an understanding of it, uh, how it works. Again, in the black community, there's all types of talk, you know, and not and and most of us don't have a working knowledge to understanding of that. All right. Um, and that's why you see, and to be honest with you, you're seeing a lot more black pastors are leaving the black church and going to pastor white churches. I'm just being honest with you because they don't want to fight no more. They don't want to have the headache no more. They don't want to fight with y'all black people no more about this, talk about money. They don't want to do it. So guess what they're doing? They say, forget it. I'm the, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be a part of the AME no more. I don't want to be a part of the uh, the black church no more. I don't want to be a part of none of that no more at all. You know what? Forget it. I'm going to go non-denominational or evangelical and I'm going to just go and I, I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to deal with none of this stuff with black people. That's that just, that's just what it is. All right. You talk to people, you see how they move and you, and they're like, well, man, why you, I don't, man, I don't want to fight no more. I don't want to, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to take up a second offering anymore. I don't like the feeling of it. And I don't even want to differ. I've been doing this for 15 years, arguing back and forth with this, that we can't get nothing done because of da-da-da-da. So they decide that they they jet and they leaving. And you're going to see more of it. So for brothers uh, and people, you know, out here, you know, um, and you're starting again, you're starting to see more of them starting early before, you know, you start you well, now there was it was it was happening later. Um, with some of the older black pastors, now they, you know, they deciding to kick the can and say, hey, I'm out. These younger ones are like, forget it. I'm not, I've been around, especially if you were a PK kid and you've been around as a PK, you hearing the stuff that your parents going, you know, dealing with and stuff like that. They like, nah, forget that. If I'm going into ministry, I'm going to go to an evangelical uh, Bible college or seminary, and then I'm going to link up with some of these white folks. And I'm just going to go past a, a, a multi-ethnic church or I'm going to pass just an all-white church and say, forget it. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> you know, I'm done. So we have to make sure that we educate ourselves on these things and not bring indictments and have an understanding of these things. Again, there's different meanings and different understandings. It depends on the, the, the culture of that community and what they identify a building fund as. There's multiple things. Shalom. All praise to the most high. Yeah, what's going on? Shalom, overseer. Um, and so it all depends on what works for your community and what it is within your community. So it's very important for us to be educated in this area. It will help tremendously to be educated on these things, uh, and know again, um, at we're living in a day and age and a day and time where you just, you know, you can't, you can't operate, you know, the way things, uh, have, have gone and you have to progress. All right. So, all right. Shalom to you all, family. Uh, blessings uh, to you all. Grace, peace, and many blessings. Hope this helped you. And uh, we'll be uh, having more conversations about this. All right. Shalom.